Hi, this is Pastor Dick from the Henry Presbyterian Church. We're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25 in the NIV version. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is this wise person? Where is this teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through his wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is the wiser than the human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. May God add his blessing to the reading of this, his holy word. A recent Rube Goldberg machine contest national challenge was to select, raise, and wave a national flag in 20 or more steps. The idea of this contest was that groups of students were given an elementary challenge, something as simple as raising a flag or peeling an apple or, or sharpening a pencil or, or putting toothpaste on a toothbrush. But instead of just solving the puzzle or problem, students have to make the solution as complicated and intricate as possible. In fact, the more steps, the better the Rube Goldberg machine. We've heard all We've heard, all heard people say that maybe you've even said it yourself, that's too simple. That won't work. We see things in life and we're skeptical. We see ads on TV and we think, oh, that's too good to be true. There must be a catch. Jesus even encountered that attitude in his day too. That won't work. That's too simple. That's too easy. Those people thought they were so smart and that caused them a big problem. <laughs> we all know people like that. They're very intelligent. Maybe they're even brilliant. They know the molecular structure of an atom, but they burn water. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and the foolishness to the Gentiles. The Jews stumbled over it because Jesus wasn't the kind of Messiah that they wanted. The Jews wanted a Messiah that would overflow, overthrow the Romans, they wanted a king that would raise an army, lead them into battle, and defeat the Romans. They wanted a warrior king. If Jesus had come to that kind of agenda, he would have marched behind them. But they ran smack dab into the cross. The cross got in the way. Christ crucified was a stumbling block because dying on the cross doesn't look like success or power. It doesn't look like victory. It looks like weakness. It looks like failure. It looks like defeat. So they kept stumbling over it. It kept getting in the way. And when he came, they crucified him. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 11, that Jesus came to his own. 
and those who were his own did not receive him. Why? They didn't receive him. Hmm. Because the Jews demanded miraculous signs. They were expecting Messiah that would perform miracles on their behalf. Which is incredible because Jesus did just exactly that. He performed miracles, turning water into wine, bringing dead back to life giving sight to the blind, the lame to walk, and the lepers to be cleansed. But those weren't the kind of, Jew, the kind of miracles that the Jews wanted. They wanted signs of power and success. The miracle they wanted was release from the Roman uh, oppression. But that wasn't the way Jesus was going to do things. That wasn't his agenda. He was going to provide freedom, but in another more simpler way. You see, God had his simple, easy plan. Jesus comes down to earth in human form, takes all of our sins upon himself, and pays our debt by dying on a cross. Ah, there's nothing hard about that. Uncomplicated, easy to understand. But still, some of us think it sounds a little too simple, a little too easy. You see, this simple plan seems foolish to those who refuse to believe it. And that was the problem to the Greeks, because they valued wisdom above everything else. They had this great tradition of learning, and they believed that with wisdom, every mystery in the world would be solved. The Greeks also had a different concept of salvation. They believed that all souls were immortal. And when you die, you go to be with the gods. And if you lived your life well enough, then when you stay, you would stay with the gods. And if not, you were reincarnated and you got another chance. And you would keep trying until you got it right. That way everybody gets finally saved. In their wisdom, they didn't need a savior because everybody was going to be saved. So to the Greeks, it was foolishness because of its simplicity. How could death to, of a Jew on a cross bring salvation? They just couldn't accept it. Even today, we still have the same problem of accepting it. Jesus died a horrible death on a cross to pay for our sins. And all we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior for salvation. Ah, oh, come on. You got to be kidding. Why? That's just plain foolishness. There's just no way that things can be that simple. So we try and make it harder. In our great wisdom, we decide that God made a mistake. And as a result, we keep running right into the cross. Now, if you're on a hiking if you're out hiking on a trail and you come to a huge pile of branches that, that are blocking your way, you would look, a, look for a way around it. And if you're driving and come to, to some road construction and the road is blocked, you would look for a way to get around it. You would look for a detour. That is exactly what we're doing with the cross. The cross doesn't look like success and power, so we keep falling over it. And we keep falling over it. It keeps getting in the way. Too many people, when they run into the cross, change directions. We start looking for a detour. We start looking for a way around the cross. Oh, we're smart. We're so smart. We're so wise. We think we need to take a 
Rube Goldberg. We think we don't need any help. We think we know how to reach our destination. We're not even smart enough to realize that we're going to run into the cross. We're there. We're already there. We don't need to stumble over it or look for a detour because we are right where we're supposed to be. It's that simple. But listen to the wisdom of verse 25 once again. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Why? Because truth is the ultimate wisdom. No matter how smart we sound, if our philosophy is wrong, that is foolishness. And no matter how foolish God's plan seems, it works. It's wisdom. Realize that God was at his most foolish and very weakest at the cross. But it was infinitely wiser and stronger than anything, anything that man could do. Amen.